Metals, maps, uniforms. That's what most men brought back from World War II. But thousands of Canadian soldiers brought home something that would change their lives forever. Wives. My mother said, now for heaven's sakes, don't go and do something stupid and get, get married. During the war, at least 45,000 young women, most of them British, married Canadian soldiers. The reason was simple. At a time in their lives when love would naturally bloom, English men were in short supply, but there were plenty of Canadians. From 1939 to 1945, half a million Canadian soldiers trained in Britain. The King and Queen inspected Canadian troops and found them up to snuff. So did Doyran Blackburn. I said to my friend, I love that fellow's smile. Doyran couldn't have fallen for a soldier with worse odds of survival. Bruce Blackburn was a paratrooper, dropped behind enemy lines for the D-Day invasion. Once D-Day started, I didn't hear from him for three weeks. I didn't know if he was alive or not. You know, you just didn't know. And he had been taken prisoner, and he did get away. When Bruce came back wounded but alive, the couple decided to get married right away. Friends donated ration cards for the gown. And the trousseau? My husband said, well, I have a parachute. So my mother made me a, a wedding or a nightgown out of a parachute silk apart from other items. Doyran and Bruce were lucky. Parents, commanding officers, even old girlfriends in Canada often opposed these English-Canadian love affairs. But in uncertain times with Nazi bombs falling all around them, young couples grabbed their chance for romance. Can you tell me how you guys met? Yes, on a number four bus. He said, uh, I really wanted to see you. Who do you think started the whistling? <laughs> <laughs> and I went to him and I said, can you ride a bicycle? <laughs> I didn't even know him. All the women you see here are war brides. They meet regularly in Summerland, in the Okanagan Valley of British Columbia. Sixty years ago, they left their mothers, fathers, and friends and headed for a big, unknown country called Canada. Starting in 1945, the soldiers were shipped back to Canada. Months later, the women crossed the Atlantic on special war bride ships. By then, many of the wives were also mothers. I was nearly seven months pregnant and sick the whole way over. <laughs> and when we got off the, the, the boat, well then, there was a a band on the shore playing Here Comes the Bride and we had to laugh because really we were tired and our, we had babies and we weren't very bride-like. We kept going past and past and well how much longer were we going to be? Four days on the train. I mean it's wonderful to see your husband again. He looks different because you've only seen him in his uniform. Very very handsome. Now he's in all these colored shirts and shorts and you name it, and you think, oh my gosh, he looks different, doesn't he? <laughs> when the welcome wagons departed, for some of these brides, the honeymoon was over. Christine Sween was used to living in town with plumbing and transportation and entertainment. When her husband showed Christine their little house on the prairie, she was shocked and shocking. There was no running water. No toilet inside. So I asked where it was, and he said, the bottom of the yard. Well, I won't tell you what I said. Tell me what you said. I said, do you think I'm going to freeze my ass off down there? <laughs> yeah, you can cut that out. <laughs> what were you in in the 18th? <laughs> A few war brides headed back to England, but most stayed. After all, these women are tough. Where are you? <laughs> no one knows that better than Howe Thompson. He married two war brides. The war brides were a gutsy bunch. That little grass is going to be nice. Remember Doy Ran, the gal who married the paratrooper? She is Howe's new bride. After her husband Bruce died, she married Howe, who was also recently widowed. I lived 19 years in Britain, and I've lived nearly 60 in Canada. 
I do feel like a Canadian and I love Canada. It's been good to me. Doiran marvels at the way her life and the lives of her friends have been shaped by love in wartime. For more information about the War Brides, check out CanadianWarBrides.com.